the streaming world of what he believes to be of quality. But there is, unseen by most, an episodic horror-based TV show. A show that still holds up. A show called Tales from the Dark Side. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to Talks from the Dark Side, the podcast where we talk about the 80s anthology television show Tales from the Dark Side, created by George Romero and Richard Rubenstein. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. And today we're talking about The Tear Collector, written by Jeffrey Loftus and directed by John Drimmer from February 24th, 1985. I don't know about you guys, but I was shedding a lot of tears watching this one, <laughs> just like uh, Jessica Harper was. This is also true. Could you? I, it's so weird. We talk about this all the time, but like, just like famous people that are well known throughout all all the all all of like the different B movies and 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 the horror movies and stuff that just pop up in this series. Yeah, they just show up, and yeah. here we are, now we got Jessica Harper from yeah. Suspiria, Fam of Paradise. Yep. Phantom of the Paradise fucking just keeps on popping no, up on this show. God. I still have to say it. I still have to say <laughs> You've it. You've never seen no, it? I never saw oh it. I've seen God. clips. I've seen clips. Oh, my God. And uh, if you saw the the first video version of this, audio listeners, I, I, unless you have magic eyeballs, you didn't see it. I wore a Suspiria shirt with Jessica Harper on it, so I'm 10 minutes from Joe's like, oh, man, I should have worn that fucking shirt. <laughs> we'll have, oh, a, we'll well. have a flashback to that, yeah. to that oh, episode yeah. right here. True. Uh, she's also in an episode of Tales from the Crypt, yep. too. Pretty good one, too. Yeah, with the, the Siamese twin brothers. Oh, there's also a I, is it a Tales from the Dark Side or is it a Monsters episode? We were talking about this yesterday and I couldn't remember what With it was. The twins? Yeah. Where they're like conjoined here, though, like at the shoulder. That is I think that's Monsters. Is it Monsters? Yeah. Could huh. be. It probably is Monsters. We'll I get feel like there. anything like special effects heavy. It's like, oh, Monsters. Well, yeah. Yeah. Usually. Yeah, because it's uh, 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 what's his face? Totally fucking blanked. Godfather of fucking special effects. One of the Dick Smith. Yeah, Dick Smith. Yeah. yeah, he was like the big consultant on that show. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is also it, it, not anywhere else is it credited except when you watch the show. But it's based on a story by Don Olson. Okay. But this is the only thing he's written. Yeah, <laughs> is and the story we for the show. It's like we have a, like a routine of like if something is based on a short story, you can usually expect it to be one of the stronger stories. Yeah, mm. like written ones. Yeah. Okay, I think <laughs> I think I think this is one that works better on paper. Um, I think that's well, just my I have my thoughts, thoughts that I'll, I'll save when we get, when we get into it. I think yeah, I think when it's, we get, I think it's a good like drama episode. Oh yeah. Um, and it's it's more weird than it is uh, scary or or. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely from the dark side, without a doubt. Yeah. Well, but, but maybe it, maybe it's like the gray side. <laughs> Right, that like in between, almost the bright side. I would argue with how it ends, but I guess we'll get there. Even the whole message of the kind of the the, the episode itself. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, but we got Jessica Harper playing Prudence, mm. and we've already said she's from *Fan of the Paradise* and *Suspiria*. Um, and then we have Ambrose Cavender played by Victor Garber. Oh, this is like the typical case of that guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, like I wouldn't like going through the credits, didn't recognize his name, but as soon as he popped up on screen, oh. That guy. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah that guy. Yeah. I, I mean, Titanic comes to mind immediately, yeah. but I know he's, I've seen him in other shit, yeah. but that's the one I'm like, oh, that, that guy from Titanic! Yeah. <laughs> he's in the 80s Twilight Zone, uh, the 90s Outer Limits. He was the voice of Master Rhino in Kung Fu Panda, which is relevant for oh. an episode coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right, yeah, you're yeah, Kung yeah. Fu Panda? Yeah, we're doing Kung Fu Panda <laughs> 1, 2, and 3. Yep. I, I only saw the first one, and I kind of love Kung Fu Panda, I'm this, not gonna lie. The second one's my favorite. I think it's I'll good. i have to check it out. I think out. it's great. Yeah, but he's also in episodes of Arrow and The Flash and Schitt's Creek and Titanic, and he's in all of these. He's, he's in, in a lot he's of in stuff. A ton huh? of stuff. Yeah. I wanted to note one thing too. Uh, the guy, the, uh, the guy who wrote this, Jeffrey Loftus. He wrote for the Magical World of Disney. Hmm. One episode besides this. That's the, the only other thing he's done. Yeah. The hell is he even? What is that? Um, Some Disney kind of miniseries? A Disney family tradition. It's fabulous! Every Sunday night. We'll be unstoppable. It's the magical world of Disney. Only the best lineup of family movies on television. 
But John Drimmer did a uh, battle in the er- erogenous zone. Oh, the classic. The classic. Yeah. Battle in the erogenous yeah, zone. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember that, that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One of my favorites. <laughs> my favorite movie as a kid. It's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's definitely on the shelf. Yeah, I got the 4K Blu-ray. <laughs> it just sounds like a uh, one of those like Cinemax classics. Oh, big time. That would yeah. be on TV at like 2 o'clock in the morning. There, I, I think I'm getting it confused because I think there's one coming up that's doing like the softcore stuff. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. It might be him, but I'm not exactly sure. We'll um, find out eventually. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, now that you got a little taste for it, can we get that Fangoria uh, breakdown yeah, of this go. episode, please, for the tier collector? And for once, we're not talking about Patreon tiers, but by the way, patreon.com slash movie dumpster. Got it out of my system. Thanks. There you go. Link below. <laughs> <laughs> You're flashing. <Yeah. laughs> All right. So here's the official uh, synopsis of the episode brought to you by Fangoria. Um, poor Prudence can't seem to get over her constant compulsive crying jags. The weepy... Okay. Jag off. Yeah. The <laughs> what weepy, a jag off. <laughs> the weepy woman meets a man who collects human tears in glass vials with the purpose of easing human sadness. Unfortunately, Prudence's unrequited affections for the harvester of sorrows upset the process. Yeah, that's... Right. Yeah, that's you yeah. Know, a that's lot of episode. crying puns in that yeah. description. Yeah, yeah. yeah somebody was getting clever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The, the lugubrious flow of lacrimal <laughs> fluids. Uh, you know, I, I said I was crying. I may have been being a bit uh, facetious, but uh, <laughs> it appears, Joe, you may uh, have, have been crying yourself. I, I would. I, I cried tears of amber in this one, um, and it smells like white musk. I don't know why. Maybe once we get into this episode, it'll make it, a lot of sense. It could be. Um, yeah, but, you know, we try to do something fun. I tried really hard to find a, a fucking swan uh, glass like you bottle. You probably have one somewhere. I mean, I can find a glass swan, but, like, the bottle that they that they use yeah. in this is really cool. And I have this weird thing with collecting items from Tales from the Dark Side. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got the answering machine. I got the fucking answering machine, yep. the phone. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that that's some fun shit though. I'm yeah, into it. No, totally, 100%. Um so I think you just said it in the description uh Chris, but uh sad prudence. This woman for the first 5 minutes of this is just crying over nothing. Literal uh, spilt milk. Dear prudence. <laughs> she heard that song and just the tears started Maybe that flowing. was it. She was like Paul McCartney wrote that cheers. for me. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for this woman right off the bat, which I guess is effective on their part then. Yeah, I mean, there, there's not too much. Uh, we talked about this before we got in. There's not too much meat to this. Um, it's very back and forthy kind of thing, and it's very drama forward. Mm-hmm. Like, there is no comedy in this. It's very, it deals with, like, um, the the sadness you experience from being alone or feeling like an outcast or like you never fit anywhere. Yeah, it's a very, like, somber yeah. episode yeah it's almost like a dreamy kind of episode yeah. too there's yeah. definitely a weird sort of mood to it yeah like i wouldn't call it an atmosphere but it definitely has its own sense of like tone yeah you know what i mean uh, yeah you wouldn't be surprised if it was just raining the entire time yeah. just the somberness of it all yep. especially like garber's voice yeah he's just so like yes i yeah. want your tears can you right? come sit down with the way me? they meet he just walks up to her in the street we'll get into it but i'm jumping ahead yeah. sorry no no it's okay yeah. i mean i mean we don't have to go beat for beat for this yeah. damn thing even I, I, though I, I, we're, we're so used to doing that. I know. I mean, honestly, Chris, you're not skipping a ton because yeah. really all you really yeah. missed is her roommate telling her, you're always sad all the time. Yeah. Go out, get a yeah. man, go party, go do stuff. Gretchen. By the way, like they're, she's like getting ready for a double date. And she's like, oh, why don't you paint your face up or whatever? It makes you feel better. You look If you look good, you, you feel, feel good. good. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And Imagine like, if that worked. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I would be the happiest motherfucker right. of all time. Yeah. She's putting the makeup on. She just cries it right off. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, but like, you know, she's, she's basically just like a thorn in this woman's side because she's be, she's always a drag, right? Yeah. It's like, you're always crying. She's We're a downer. To, yeah. Yeah. I can't take you anywhere. Mm-hmm. Trying to go on a date with this guy. It's like, <laughs> just go out by yourself, lady. Like, yeah. But um, she is a, she's a good concerned friend, though. Oh, yeah. As we get into mm-hmm. the episode. Uh, but yeah, Prudence is walking down the street, Jessica Harper, and um, there's just like this bum rummaging. It, it was it was Kaz is what it was. Oh, from, wait, from, from My Demon Lover? From My Demon Lover. He was there, and he was yeah. like chasing skirt. No, that's not what happens. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, this guy is just 
talking to himself being crazy yeah. and he's like grabbing her yeah and he's like hey lady he's like you think i'm crazy don't you but whatever sure. yeah he's a step above like crazy homeless guy yeah he's like yeah actually grabbing her trying to spin her around yeah that's a whole that's yeah. that yeah. yeah so that actor I, I i actually pulled up he's in recently he was in uncut gems as you, like one of the main guys you mentioned wow. that and yeah. i have not seen that yet it's good. and it's that's fun. hilarious it's fun yeah is that what happened to him like after the movie exactly yeah. right like went into lost, yeah, yeah the jewelry <laughs> business yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it it was, you know, everything was looking up Millhouse for that guy. Yeah, big time. Um, but yeah, uh, he he walks up to him, the, the quote unquote tear collector TM. Well, I, real quick, I want to just cap that off with the fact that yeah, like yeah, yeah. she's like in tears crying and this guy's like, oh, you're very sensitive yeah, person. Of all things she, to say. She gives him like all her money. Yeah. I don't know. Just reaches into her, in her wallet and just, just gives him a whole stack of yeah. cash. And then Victor Garber's like, huh, you're crying. <laughs> Perfect, another victim. <laughs> He's got his little umbrella. He's like, I see you're the most saddest woman that I've ever seen. Um, here's my card. I collect things. I'll let you know when you get there exactly what it is. Thank you. That's pretty much how his voice is. Yeah. Like, yeah. not even exaggerating. <laughs> That's how he sounds. But it's very calming. Like morose, almost, but very, yeah. yeah, calming. It's calming and and kind of uh, uh, arresting. Melancholy. Yeah, but arresting in, in what I mean is, like, it's very inviting, I guess, is the word yeah. I'm looking yeah. for. Like, he doesn't come off as creepy. No. As you'd expect to, like, oh, we're watching Tales from the Dark Side. Yeah. Here's a creepy guy. It's yeah. like, it's not like that. Yeah, because there's definitely been episodes where I've, I've brought this up and I'm sure you guys have, but it's like, where it's like, all right, this person seems innocent, but you know it's Tales. So you're like waiting for the other shoe to drop. This guy was like, I don't know. I just, he seems trustworthy. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. And like, it's another big point with Prudence because like she doesn't connect with anybody. And it's a big point, too, that, like, she hasn't had, like, a date in forever or, like, you know, nobody puts up with her crying or anything like that. So, yeah. like, for somebody, like, he's, like, this handsome, soft-spoken dude. Yeah. And she's, like, well, shit, all right, I'll come to your fucking gallery or whatever this collector card is. Uh, yeah, and then he gets in his car with the license plate tear. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, that Cruella DeVille oh, yeah, car. That might, that might be the one joke, and it's a visual one. Yeah. Tear. That's like, what what oh. collect? <laughs> no, I'm just tears I collect ripping tears, tears. <laughs> yeah oh yeah the doom guy's there yeah. he's got a whole you body a soundtrack right here <laughs> yeah oh yeah perfect yeah <laughs> copyright <laughs> dun, 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 dun. cbs stop claiming our shit and if we do that we're really gonna be in trouble yeah. now bethesda's on your ass uh. you're, gonna, you're gonna make me write a a rebuttal to every damn copyright claim aren't you thanks cbs the intro isn't even the same I mean, anyway i mean it is the same but it's okay because yeah. we're gonna be making a new one soon stay tuned yeah uh, but after that aside, yeah, they they go to this like it's almost like a therapist kind of office that he's running. It feels like, um, yeah, it's this weird thing where he has like a couch. It's very like low key. It's very relaxing in there. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, come on and come here, come sit on my couch. I want to go hang out on that couch. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, you're more comfortable if you lay down and blah blah blah. blah. And she's like, I can't stop crying. I hate it. Like I hate it. And he's like, no, don't hate it. It's okay. Crying is great. Wait, is that a uh, Paul McCartney you're doing now? Oh, good, okay, yeah. <laughs> Dear Prudence. Wait, is it Paul? I'm mixing Beatles. I, I don't know. The <laughs> other one, Ringo. <laughs> Whatever. Merlin. I wrote a song about an octopus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also like this door that they kind of focus on. They don't wait long to reveal what's behind it, but it's this like glass door with just this very bright white yeah, light it, shooting through it's, it. Yeah. Everything, room. it's like, yeah. in, it's not inconspicuous whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. And I like that line, though, because she goes to, like, look through the keyhole, and he's like, oh, locked doors, the, you know. They hide well, shit. Yeah, I forgot what he said there. It it's was, so tempt. they're so tempting. Locked doors. Is <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> about, locked doors are so tempting. So then she lays down on this therapist chair, if you will, and she starts bawling. And this is where he breaks out this glass swan with the fucking topper. He's the, he's the literal tear collector yeah. to him. And he's talking to her and he's like, oh, you know, uh, I don't know why I cry. I don't want to see a doctor. I don't want to take pills. And he's like, you have this deep sadness and I'm going to help you. And he helps her by collecting, literally collecting her tears of, of sadness. Yeah, holds a bottle right up to her eye and just boop, and just boop, 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 yeah, sucks, sucks him in. right up. And I swear in this shot, Maybe it was when we when we watched it before, but it's like you could see like little splashes on her like cheek. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> like eyedropper exaggerated splashes. Yeah, somebody yeah. was yeah. somebody was dripping off camera. Jessica, can you cry? I've been crying for an hour. Yeah. How much you want me to cry? My eyes are red. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot to this episode in terms of like uh, inner reflection stuff. Oh, absolutely. Like uh, she, you know, she says she's always been alone. Mm. Again, she's never connected with anybody, and this guy is just making it so appealing for her to cry. Yeah, and like 
again, be trustworthy. And yeah. almost she starts like falling in love with this guy. And he says like, like suave kind of shit. Like, yeah. did you know the Chinese thought tears were, 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 went hand in hand yeah, with very, divinity and things like that? Very you welcoming know? and, yeah. you know, warm and everything, which yeah. is what she's been looking for. Yeah. And then at the same time, he's like reminding her a little bit that it's like very much all business. Yeah. yeah. It, it's completely uh, platonic. Yeah. And he literally just wants the tears. Yeah. <laughs> I do like a lot too. Uh, you know, you get more into the sad, like the sadness angle as it goes on, uh, specifically if that makes sense. Uh, but like, I think that the first or second session she has with him when she's done, he's like, "How do you feel?" And she's like, "Oh, I I feel great for the first time ever." And he's like, "Well, because you didn't hate your tears this time, you just let it happen." Yeah. She's like, "Huh? Okay." Yeah. I just cried. So and she's like slowly mm. kind of getting better. From crying and him collecting them. Yeah. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. only slowly getting better from the crying, but like, again, she feels like she's connecting with somebody yeah. finally for the first time. Which is like, what does that say about a roommate? You know, on some level, I know that's, I, I'm kind of probably thinking about this a little deeper than maybe people need to, but I'm like, huh. Well, that's why like, we're here. To yeah. Pull well, it apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're friends with this woman, but you never had a connection. I guess like, is her roommate really an asshole? Well, well I mean like a love connection, oh, like a well, romantic sure, connection, sure. right? Yeah. Not like. Hey, hang out with me because yeah. I'm crying or whatever. And just like, a let's get a pizza. guy with a nice uh, yeah. old car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're just burning through tissues constantly in that yeah. apartment. Right. Um, and she's she's she keeps mentioning she's waited so long to be happy and things like that. And and uh when she goes to see him for the second time after the session, she's like completely smitten now. Mm. And he's like, Oh, one more session and 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 you'll be free. I, I can't promise you you'll be happy because everybody's happy and sad. That's just the way it goes. But yeah. you know what you will be? Free. Free she from your deep sadness. No. Yeah. She just like staring at his eyes. No. You know, puppy dog eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, well, I think it's time for me to show you what's behind door number one. <laughs> Tell her what she's won, Johnny. Uh, cracks his fucking door open. It's this white ass room. Makes me think of uh, Indiana Jones 3 a little bit. <laughs> Just and missing the- Meets an Apple store. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my God, you're right, Chris. <laughs> Holy shit. Someone's in the corner trying to sign you up for Apple yeah. uh, music. Probably. Uh, but yeah, it's like, just like we have on display here, uh, uh, these bottles that Joe put out. There's just bottles lining all these, uh, th these countertops. Um, I, I love this part because he's like, he's got all of these vials all over this room and they're all full and they're all full. And he's like, this one's from the Chinese dynasty. Oh no, no, excuse me. This one's from uh, uh, a young brave when the conquistadors took his land or whatever, or like, you know, completely crushed his civilization. Yeah. The Az a young Aztec. That's what it was. And she's like, man, that's fucking old. And he's like, I've been around a long time. And that's kind of all you get of like that little hint. Kind of, like, of. Yeah. You get yeah. A, you get two more little things and then they never really tell you like who this guy is yeah. uh, as an entity. And I like that. Yeah. I just like, here's a little line and, mm -hmm. you know, just figure it out. It's great. Yeah. I, I was fully expecting and, you know, it doesn't really go there, but I was expecting him like he's like evil and he's collecting these tears and then he takes your soul but it's like again I'm, I'm trying to like assume it's a bad end result because the show has done that so many times yeah. Yeah. so I appreciate without without just saying it the swerve we get towards the end here. oh totally and the way he describes it he's like oh this is my chamber of ancient sorrows mm. that, imagine having a room in your house called, called the chamber <laughs> of ancient sorrows <laughs> exactly yeah. and it's just like tears from across the yeah. ages and yeah. time or, or like a, a sadness room or something I don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> or a madness room. Oh. Next oh. episode, spoiler. <laughs> Oops. Where's my camera? There it is. <laughs> 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 Whatever. He, then he's like, he, she, he, he's like, he's like, these are tears from a, a, sil a civil war mother whose son never came home. He's like, yeah. He, oh, oh, yeah. He, yeah, a drink. yeah. he listens but, to it at one point. Then you can kind of, ooh, you hear all the screaming. All sorts of sounds. Yeah. Now we're getting, yeah, it gets a little strange uh, yeah. here. Yeah. Well, so just one one thing. She, like, goes back to the apartment, and this fr and her friend Gretchen's like, oh, you know, you're seeing this weird guy. He's mm. giving you money. What are you doing for oh, this guy? Yeah, I forgot he gives her money, like $100 bills. She, uh, $100, $50 bill. No, he gives her, mm. yeah, he gives her hundreds, but. Uh, um, Wrapped up in a tissue. It's in a tissue. Yeah. And it's. Five hundred dollars, and yeah. she's like, "Where the what hell you, did this come what from?" What does he have you doing for him? Yeah, for this money. And he's like, "She's like nothing. I yeah. cry for him." <laughs> and she's like, "What?" I, I I I don't understand the money aspect, but okay, sure, it's making her happy, I guess. Well, it's like a token of his thing because, like, 
how long would she would he be able to string her along? Mm. Which he's trying not, he's really trying hard yeah, he's not, really to trying do. not to do. And he's like, he's like, here, take the money because I can't give you anything else except the money. And the only thing I can take from you is your tears. And yeah. she's least concerned about the money. Yeah. It's like, that's, she's not even thinking no, about it. No, because again, it's that thing, man. It, it's, it's the eternal loneliness, the deep sadness of never feeling like you'll find someone and that you're just alone in the universe. Mm. Yeah. And she thinks it's this guy <laughs> that she's met who's the one. Uh, yeah. So I guess what she goes on this last uh, session and she's and she starts really just kind of bleeding her heart out to him. Well, she shows up when she's not supposed to. And he's right. like, and he's like, oh, I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. And she's like, well, I just wanted Actually, to I just wanted to see you. See you. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, um, so uncomfortable. And then he takes out the vial and he's like, oh, you cry for me. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> She's sitting in the chair and she's like, can we just talk? And he's like, <laughs> cry. Yeah. And she's like, I want to cry for you, but I can't. I'm surprised Steam didn't just start bellowing out of his ears. He didn't know how to fuck. He's like, does not compute. <laughs> so this is this is one of the other little touches here because he's like, oh, you need some help. And she's like, yeah, I, I, I need some help. So he leans over and he kisses her. And she immediately waterworks. Yeah. She's like got seven or eight fucking tears rolling yeah. down her face. And he's like, Whoa, he's catching him like Plinko. Scooping yeah, him yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's finally full. The vial's full, guys. He caps it up. He's like, that's it. You're done. You're free. Thanks. See you never. See you never. Well, well gee, he says a fucked up line. I mean, again, if you're watching the episode, it kind of aligns with what you've been seeing. But he's like. She's like, oh, that, that meant nothing to you? He's like, oh, I just did it to get the tears. Yeah, and, she, and it worked. And, yeah. it, <laughs> and she's like, I thought you cared about me. And he's like, is there some mistake? Like, I gave you money and I told you I just wanted tears. <laughs> we, I never said anything about yeah. you or, you know, yeah. a second date or anything. Um, and then she goes to leave. And some as as she's leaving, some some other woman's coming in who's like sobbing uncontrollably. So she, we, we found another one. Yeah, another happy we customer. got one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so she comes in and this woman is wailing on this chair on his little, you know, sexy You'd sofa. Want to, like, these bottles. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, he's going to have a big one. I yeah. wonder what her sadness was, right? Yeah, I wonder what. What what she was so upset yeah. about. I don't know. I don't know. She was a little older. Maybe her husband or, or her wife passed away. I don't know. Could be. I don't know. Maybe Let's she read a letter. Yeah, hey, George, episode... dear George Romano. <laughs> uh, dear Roy Romano. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so she she comes back in and she's like she's, she's she's like a fucking cat. She sneaks in. Yeah, and I don't know what the goal is here. Okay, fine. You, you're pissed off that uh, he he took your tears and he's not he doesn't want to yeah. date you or anything. But he gave you money. Yeah, like five hundred bucks. Decent amount of money bet, uh, for nineteen eighty five. Five hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. I don't putting think... some juice in a bottle. For, yeah, <laughs> so putting some face juice in a bottle. Get a new stereo. Yeah, but like she goes in to take the tears back. Yeah, but but then she's like a klutz about it. I oh guess because how else do you get? That's this... the weirdest part. Yeah, yeah. She she picks it up, knocks over how many bottles? Oh, it's she, like four or five. She, yeah. she like <laughs> knocks over the whole Ming Dynasty, dude. Because like these are like old. Like they look like little jars from either like Egypt or Asia or something. Yeah, with and both elbows too. With, yeah, she goes, oh no, oh yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She turns twice. Yeah. it's like as much noise as you could possibly make, other than stomping on the glass once it fell. Yeah. Fuck the noise! All of a sudden, she hears oh. all this crying. Yeah, and it's like the super. She's released like the 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 literal sadness that are that have been held in these jars for God knows how long. It's like the electric gremlin. Yeah, yeah. Oh my <laughs> God, <laughs> screaming her uh, in the room. I'm thinking of like <laughs> surrounds Christopher <laughs> yeah, Lee and kills him. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm yeah. thinking of like Shang Tsung Souls oh, Mortal Kombat. That's what I, I That's where I thought it was going. That's actually but... a, that's a pretty good comparison. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah. He's like. Yeah. He's the. What is what's the good one? The Ying. To the Yang, uh, yeah, I think he's the I, shi- I he's the Shing know. to the Sang. <laughs> yeah, the Tear Collector could be the good version of that character, sure, you yeah. know. Um, so he not she knocks all that shit over, and he comes running in. He's like, "Oh my god, the tears!" And she's like, "She's like, I, I'm out of here." So she goes to run out. We missed one thing important. The sure. other thing was you mentioned before, and he listens to these things. Yeah, yeah. So what was so interesting about this to me is that he lifts it up and he listens. And he listens to the crying and the sorrow of whatever was in this particular bottle. 
and he himself has one like single tear that like runs oh, down his face. Yeah, that was, when he I listens like that. to it. So, it, so what I got from that was like this: this man is some kind of entity that uh, not only kind of procures the sadness from from human beings and and kind of bottles them up and keeps them aw- keeps you know because there's so much sadness in the world, yeah. right? But he's he somehow like lives off of it. That's what I got too. You know, it's like he feeds on that. It's like where they complemented each other. She's trying to release her sadness. Yeah. Where he's trying to like he feeds off of it. Yeah. And he like needs that. He he needs it so that he can feel something. Yeah. I that's I, the way that it reads to I, me. I would agree with that, Joe. Yeah. yeah. And um, not a like a malicious sort of way. I know. It's like she very much volunteered and wanted to be there, yeah. and you know they're very. Yeah, it's not like a creepy way that he does it. It's it's, it's like an it, it's like an absorbent yeah. kind of like yeah. like like takes it onto himself. Yeah, he yeah. he takes the weight of other he, like one person at a time. He's trying to like <laughs> you know uh, stop the sadness in the yeah. world. But I guess he has like Spidey sense or some shit for that because like it's only the most saddest people. Mm. in each you know it's not like you know i broke you know you know, a rock hit my windshield and i got a yeah. crack in it and i'm sad it's a public service yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's literally like mending the heartbreak these people have by yeah. taking it away from them so and that he they can mentions live that when she runs out too. yeah it's like there's so much sadness in the world yeah yeah and he's like you don't understand i was trying to help you and he's like all you wanted was my tears yeah, wow. she's still bitter. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, all right, like I get it, but like now you're able to love. Right. You're able to move forward with your life and not have that sadness, that deep sadness that he's talking about holding you down and 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 uh clouding your thoughts, your judgment, yeah. your self-image. All of those things like a veil is like mm-hmm. lifted off of yeah. you and now you you're free yeah. to Can do you- what you, you know, your life, yeah, the rest did, of your he life. He definitely did help her out. Yeah, yeah and she time. was in a better place, you know, when she left. Yeah, yeah, no longer controlling her life, if you will. Right, and then she runs out into the middle of the street <laughs> and almost gets hit by <laughs> a taxi. Cat. I, I thought those. she was gonna die. I was like, oh, what a way! To... No, that doesn't happen. She drops her tears and they shatter, and she's like, oh my god, my tears. I was like, okay, what are you gonna do with them? You don't <laughs> lick need... them up. I don't know. You don't need them. And then the librarian from Ghostbusters gets out of the taxi cab. That's who it was? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh my the, God. The, what's that got to do with it? That That's literally that that's guy. guy? Yeah, he's also, it, we just were talking about Copycat. He's also Sigourney Weaver's assistant in Copycat. Oh, my God. Yeah. What a cameo. Yeah. In the last minute of this episode. He's an okay actor, but he is terrible in this episode. Yeah. He's like, oh, you have a beautiful smile. <laughs> Want to go There's with like a me? pause at one point. Yeah. yeah. And this is the same year he did Ghostbusters. I know. Well, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And they just kind of like, it kind of just wraps up because he's like, whoa, whoa, what was that important? She's like, it was my tears. He's like, okay, uh, what do you want me to do? She's like, it's fine. Want to go get, get it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> want to yeah. go on a date? Okay. And they walk away. They leave the cab. This is what I, yeah, I was saying. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, his he cab. Stopped, yeah, stops the cab short, almost hits her, drops the tears. They talk on the sidewalk, I guess. Yeah. And the next shot is them walking down the sidewalk. Yeah, that dude is still it's in like, cab with the meter cab? running. Yeah, he just got out of his hey, cab and buddy. found this strange woman. Unless he's the cab driver and he just left it parked in the street. And now there's a huge traffic jam. He could right? be. I don't know. It's kind of nice though because it's like fate now. And yeah. now, we, again, like if this was any other time before the tear thing, she would have just like cried in this guy's face. Yeah, I had a complete breakdown. It, yeah, yeah, and that would have been it. But now she's able, you know. She's able yeah. to move on. And, and this is a I don't know about this guy is her love, but she's able to love now. Sure. At least it's an attempt at love. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like we should this is our actually a really big deal because the ending, this is the first happy ending we have on the on the series. Yeah, it really is yeah. though. And we have a non malicious entity yep. as well. Like, which is also kind of unique to this episode because I don't know if we have a. No- I don't think there's. Can you recall one? Not, there's no, yeah, not where there's a about. singular non malicious entity. Wait, entity specifically. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. Because I don't. Does, does the impressionist count? Does that count as entity? Uh, no, because Jumping that, ahead to season two. No, here, but... no, be, no, because that's like an actual, <laughs> uh, like alien. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Like this is totally supernatural, right? Yeah. Yeah, not nothing, extra, non-extraterrestrial. Yeah, there's none any um there's not any that ahead that really like an entity like yeah. this, like non malicious trying to help out. No, like, totally. Like a friendly uh friendly ghost. <laughs> kind almost. of. Not a, I mean not quite no, Casper, but yeah. The sadness guy. That's a shit joke. <laughs> Never mind. I thought I was going somewhere with that. That's so funny. uh so uh 
So what do we all what do we all think of this episode? I didn't love it. I thought it was just okay. I feel like the idea is very good. And I do like that it does end on a, a, not on a downer for once, no. even though some of those downers are pretty funny. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's definitely one that you got to watch. I would say I, I wouldn't say skip it by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely like on the lower end of episodes for this season for me. Um, again, very original idea. So I, I'll give it a lot of points for that. Uh, but yeah, it was just OK. I didn't love it. Didn't hate it. Just thought it was OK. I think it was very it's very much a slow burn. But it doesn't, re- it's not one of my favorites. Mm. But I do, I'll give the actors credit. It's like for what they, for what the script said and like what they had to work with, they did a fine job. Yeah. Jessica Harper, especially, she's great. And uh, yeah, was really fine in this. But as an episode, I think it was a little slow, a little too, too slow for me. I get you. I get you. But I you. appreciate it going into like the strange. Mm. So at least give it that. But yeah, it's not one of my favorite. It's fine. I like it. Yeah. I, it. It's like a complete left turn from what we got in the last episode. Wow. And that was like a straightforward horror. Yeah. And this is more like uh, even almost like a fairy tale-esque type yeah, episode. Yeah, that's actually a good way to call it. Yeah. Um, This one's, co- this one's a cozy one for me. Mm-hmm. I seem to remember like vividly one of the first times seeing this on like a rainy day and it kind of fits that whole oh, that's mood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like a you know, it's kind of like sitting on the couch with like, you know, cozy in your blanket and yeah. you're watching Tales from the Dark Side. And it's like it's got this kind of ethereal dreamy uh, dreaminess running through the whole episode. And um, I love the idea of this. I love for some reason I'm obsessed with this idea of like collecting tears and being able as a form of like therapy. Yeah. And literally taking any everything that's that makes you sad or like second guess yourself or like basically cripple you either whether it's uh socially or 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 creatively and being able to have this guy who can or this entity rather who can literally solve that problem by collecting it in a fucking jar and putting it on a shelf and and curing you of i mean not curing you of everything but like taking it away from you Right, and not not that like happiness because happiness and sadness are relative, but the things that are blocking you from moving forward in your life, or or um, you know, getting getting things done, or or you know, getting yourself to where you want to be yeah. in a spot where nobody really can help you except yourself. So this mm-hmm. is one of those. It's one of those things where it can like it almost like reaches inside of you and takes it out. Uh, without doctors, without pills, without yeah. without even uh, 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 counseling or anything, it's just like, all right, drip drip your shit in here, and and yeah. and ma- you're magically right. you know better. Um, I just think it's a cool concept, and the idea of this benign guy walking around with an umbrella, like just targeting the saddest people in the world and trying to make it a little bit better yeah. for everybody, you know what I mean? Is kind of neat to me. Um, it's sweet, it's sad, and then it's happy. Um. It's it's a slow burner, you know. It's it's not something that that uh, the intro of the show would necessarily dictate. You would think you're getting something totally yeah. totally oh, different. Yeah. Um, if if you if this is your first episode you've watched, but um, I, I don't know. I think it's a I think it's a solid episode without having to be um reliant on a monster or yeah. or a ghost or or uh the strange and unusual mm-hmm. yeah and and i'll say this too and this will probably come up on a later episode because i think some of the order of these episodes not that that's like make or, or breaks the show by any stretch mm-hmm. of the imagination but you're right when you put in the context of the last episode was straight up horror mm-hmm. the one after this a bit of a mix, but it's a horror episode. And this is just like kind of a straight up like, hey, it's a drama. There's some some mm-hmm. supernatural elements, but it, it definitely fits in really well there. There's some episodes later that we'll, we'll get to where I feel like maybe they should have positioned them in <laughs> yeah, different right. slots yeah. just to kind of mix it up more. <laughs> but yeah, that that's a good point, Joe. It's it's a spice in the soup of tale, the Tales from yeah. the Dark Side soup that I think needs to be there in the grand scheme of this series. I would agree. For sure. Yeah, it mixes it up with in the anthology format. It's mm-hmm. like it's you get a grab bag. Yeah, and it's it's a good one. Yeah, and that's <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, 
I think that's about it. I think that's so, about yeah, it. Yeah, we got I mean, kind of all the meat off that bone. It's it's short and sweet, <laughs> and, and then and so we're eating the bone a little bit <laughs> yeah. there, gnawing it a little bit. I know I repeated myself a few times, but fuck it. Drank some tears <laughs> in between shots. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, listen. You smell something. <sighs> anyway. Um, we should actually drop uh, Ambrose's card if anyone out there yeah. wants to uh, <laughs> use his services. They can... He's going to hook you up. Don't worry. He's not a creep. He'll pay you, too. There you go. Uh, but, if, but if you get a card from the younger Tagoro from Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, y- your tears probably turn into diamonds for anyone that knows what I'm talking about. Mm. And uh, d- don't return his calls because it's going to be it's going to end badly. <laughs> but yeah, that was the tear collector. And until next time, I'm Joe LaScola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. from the dark side is always there, waiting for us to watch it, waiting for us to hit play. Until next time, try to find it on DVD and watch along with us.